think the core of really onboarding and managing millennials effectively is culture, and I love that it's finally having its day. It's challenging to imagine that somebody would sign up to a job where they're going to spend 40, 50 plus hours a week if there's something fundamental that they're not getting out of the environment. And so culture I describe as it's the values of a workplace, the norms of behaviors, the beliefs, the actions, and the words that really make up what it's like to work at a particular company. And I think that it's so powerful for a business to figure out what is your culture and how do you articulate that. So a lot of people start by talking to their employees, understanding for the people that are already at your company, why did they choose you over other companies? So why did they choose you? Why do they stay? What is it that they would tell their friends and contacts about working at your company? And over time, you can start to see certain patterns emerge. These make up the culture. They often make up also what's known as the employee value proposition, which is why uh, uh, why an individual employee would come to work at your company. And I think that for management, it can be, um, well, on one hand, it can be a tremendous opportunity. If you have a culture that really gets people energized, that is a tremendous recruiting tool. On the other hand, a lot of managers find out that they don't actually, um, they're not excited about the culture that they've created. It's often because people think that culture just kind of happens and I think that really good companies are built deliberately. So for managers that maybe are doing a culture exercise and realizing that they might not be um, creating the work environment that they'd like, I think that's an opportunity to really listen to the feedback you're getting from your teams, from your employees, and think about how you change that and what kind of business you want to build. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, really talented people, they are out there looking at different companies and they're not just waiting weighing them based on salary and perks, they're weighing them based on culture and based on the experience of working there. The way that individuals and companies are connecting with each other definitely has been changing quite a bit and for every company that has a more traditional process, we've seen some pretty, um, pretty fascinating outliers. Instead of just doing classic interviews, which can sometimes feel a little bit boring, I've seen companies pull, pe pull people in into problem solving sessions. Um, when possible, I think it's really great if the companies actually pay people. So they'll say, we want you to come in, we're gonna pay you for an hour, and we're gonna actually have you problem solve with a couple people on the team. Again, I think there's a lot of companies that are hesitant to step outside the line, but the ones that do often find that they get really creative people as a result. for onboarding millennials, if you can help them understand how what they're going to do fits in with the broader vision of the company. I think millennials in general, they're exposed to a lot of different opportunities. So they're really looking for companies that are going to invest in their growth, that are going to provide them with professional development, with learning opportunities. Onboarding is a great chance to do that because you can really lay out, here's what you're going to learn, here's what you're going to get out of this job. Um, and then obviously managing millennials, it's about both giving them feedback, but also listening to their feedback as well, because I think many people today expect to have a voice in the workplace.